Okay, folks, so I've got the wiring installed in the boot area. I haven't returned the trim yet, but I've realised I've made quite a mistake. I know why I've made the mistake as well, and that is I routed the wiring through this hole, thinking it was just a hole not used for anything but it's actually the hole that is used with this leg on the rear quarter trim now given that i removed it why did i make that mistake it's because um although you're seeing this as one video i had to go to work i think there were four days between me removing the trim and then doing this job and I just lost it. So <clears throat> that's got to come out of that hole or the leg won't go back in. Now, given that to take this back out and reroute it, and if you're doing this job, I would say route it through here. It's tight, but you'll get it through with the rest of the wiring. That's probably the most obvious place anyway. But I have to have this car back on the road in the next few hours. <clears throat> So I'm going to have to do um, a version of moving this wire that is not ideal. In fact, I'm going to drill another hole um, to the left and up of it, chain drill a little uh, route to move the wire over so it never actually comes out of this, it just gets moved over. Far from ideal. Um, no negative consequences, just really irritates me. But I know that to remove the wiring from the boot and then reroute it neatly like I have is going to take me an hour and I just don't have that hour. I could cut this out obviously and just show you the uh, new bit, <clears throat> pretend it never happened, but I'm not like that. Not what I would want, but it's going to work fine. <clears throat> so first, we've got to reinstall our speaker. Start with the speaker wires. <clears throat> snap into position then slip the speaker over the studs on the bottom seeing the construction of this speaker you could very easily make up an enclosure for it meaning you can mount any size of speaker any style of speaker you wanted um, you've not got unrestricted space but it's not snug and you could remanufacture this as an enclosure if you wanted to you're never going to get the same audio quality in a convertible that you do in a coupe or coupe because the space that you're supplying the sound to is variable can't really tune the sound in the same way. Okay, so I'll just tighten all these up. There we are. That's back in place. As I say, the clearance is very good around it. Should you want to do something a bit different. So to put this trim panel back on and then we can look at getting a seat back in. And the very first thing I'm going to do is hook that peg into the hole that I had covered up and have now vacated. That's great, that's in. <coughs> then 
get this end, this finger, to go underneath the sill trim. A bit of flexing. Like so. And then just I'm give this front edge a, a thump. And that's got it. Clips have gone in. And there was a fir tree clip, if you remember, in this corner. It's just going to be snapped back into a hole. That's in. And that panel is returned. So now we need the top. This peg should be captive in this slot. I'm going to leave it there, see how I get on. Um, and then you've got all these, and then you've got all these T-shapes around the inside. Now you've got a slot into this on the trim panel. So I get the position correct should all slide together quite nicely yeah and in that screw base and get it to jump back into its slot like so that's about it that's all pushed in we'll take our seat belt top And put that back in there. Centralize it. There we go, that's going in. It's just a case of refitting one screw in the end here, one screw in there, and the 10 axe fastener there, and that's back together. My tray of screws. Here we go. One for in there. That one's not quite long enough. This one's longer. There we go. So the longer screw goes in the front if you have a longer screw and then I have a 10 axe fastener that fits there okay with all that done We can reintroduce our backrest for our rear seat. And we need to pull the sockets for the seat belts well forward and out of the way. And then we need to lift it too high and push it right back. Because we've got that U section that has to clip over the bulkhead. And then, once we're back, slide it down over the bulkhead until it clips into position like I just heard it do. And I've got two of these uh, gold passivated self-tappers that are going to go in at the base of the seat. And if it's all aligned correctly, that hole should line up with the hole in the bulkhead, which it does. Woohoo! There's not a lot of uh, chance of getting this wrong because the seat is so tightly 
constrained by its surroundings. So something will have gone very awry if you can't get one of these screws back in. Now your seat base may put up a little bit more of a fight because you've got to squeeze it underneath the back rest and you've got to get the um, seat belts through the little gator. So I suggest you start with the seat belts. Open that up, get them forward and start them coming through. Forcing it back and down, gotta get it underneath that backrest. Get the poppers done back up, and it's one pop stud around each leg of the seatbelt base stalks. There we go. And then once they're in, tuck them right back into position. And then we can move our attention to the bolts that stick out below the seat and maneuvering them to pass through the tab on the bodywork. Ah, there we go. And with those in place, you want your nut with attached washer. So the last item to return are these uh, seatbelt guides. And as we discussed previously, um, there should be like a shoulder in there. This one is gone broken off so I'll be very very carefully reattaching this and uh, another task for me then to do is rebuild this area some form of plastic welding as soon as I've got time they are very brittle plastics so we slide our seat belt through the slot and maneuver it into position Because there's not actually enough room to pull this over all the way to one side, make a fold. Fold shortens the width. Pull that over to one side. And this allows you to get the whole seatbelt width in. And then we've just got to unfold it. Now that it's all in the slot and we're in. It will hold in place on itself because the seat belt hanging it down, but you are really supposed to have those screws in there. But for obvious reasons, I should be putting them in quite loosely. As demonstrated by where I'm holding the screwdriver. Okay, so we're back in the boot. And the reason is... And the reason is... As you remember, we've got the wires going to the camera, all working wire coming back from the camera, this red one, which I extended, goes back for the grommet. Here it is. I'm gonna further extend it and make it yellow for my own reasons. 
and then uh, that is going to be our reversing camera trigger wire okay so i've routed my wire and just anchored it back there <clears throat> we need to take a feed from the reversing bulb there isn't a reversing um fuse that isn't linked to other things in the car so up to the lamp we go i'm lucky enough still to have these little plastic covers so if you've got those take those off and <clears throat> there is a little push uh, trim clip in here that has a screwed in center if you don't press on it and turn center the center will unscrew and you can pull the entire item out you don't need to remove this it's just to give you a little bit of space like that then you've got your electrical connector onto your lamps press in on the wire and then push down and that comes off and you can because you've moved this bit of panel you can unhook the wire from behind it there we are now on an early car I can tell you that the reversing wire is the yellow wire with a white tracer hence I turn convert this to yellow I'm just anal when it comes to that sort of stuff if you're not sure or if you have the dual lamps as in JEW uh, the later vehicle might worth just checking just pop the cover off here look at your reversing light lamp and then trace on the circuit board which terminal the reversing bulb picks its feed up from and confirm that it is like this the yellow and white or at least on like on this the second from this end so in the middle of the car first wire second wire but you know do your own little bit of confirmation and take my trusty pen knife just going to slice the little bit of cloth tape that's holding this bundle together once you get it going it'll unwrap rather easily because it's not very sticky stuff and what we need to do is separate out that yellow and white and we're going to cut it now you could do it by repinning the connector and all sorts of other ways whatever way suits you best I'm going to cut that wire there and I'm going to strip both ends about 8 mil I guess critical and we obviously want to rejoin them with this one included and obviously you can uh, solder these you could use a chocolate block with screws you could use um, crimp on connectors you could even scotch lock it on if you like um, I'm going to use a three port lever connector which is kind of the modern version of a chocolate block it's easy to remove the wires later change things I can resolder them um, and remove this if I ever needed to and also note I have labeled this wire rev because i hope it's going to be there for a very long time and but i forget where it is here's our connector 
if you've never seen these are great i'll put a link to some in the description and as always go to my little amazon shop we now have and you should find it lift all the little levers and then all the um ports in this are connected so you just put one in because they're semi-transparent you can see the insulation and where the bare section is which is really nice one two three and they're all linked Ta -da! <clears throat> once you've done that you just reconnect this put the cover back on tuck the wire behind put your trim clip back in and you're done I'm now just going to put the trim cover back in there and I shan't bore you with it, but I'm going to clip all the clips back to put that back up there. There we go. Okay, folks, I've made things as hard for myself as I can. Got the roof up. Let's get the car going. Let's wait for the car ride unit to start up. Don't take long, there we are. Engine note drop off. And I can switch to cameras manually using that button. Gives me the forward view and the rearward view. Just gonna turn the forward view actually to face myself. What we're going to do is put it into reverse gear. Yay. And instantly we get the rear view. If I take it out of reverse, there's a small delay. And it goes back to the screen, into reverse. Now I've set myself up with the worst possible, well, most challenging possible scenario. I've put the roof up. Um, as we know, the rear view is not fabulous out of our cars anyway. And I'm going to reverse out of my garage, round a corner, and into a car parking space between a couple of fire extinguishers that somebody randomly has left. Um, now I know this, I would struggle with this without this uh, reversing camera, and this is genuinely the first time I'm actively using it. So I'm going to see how we get on. So I'm able to manoeuvre on my mirrors, it's a tight area I'm in bump into my bench in my garden. Um, I've got my camera on the rear set up, pointing down, so I can actually see the corners, in the corner of the view, my rear bumper. And I know that normally when I'm backing up to things, I probably leave nearly three foot if I'm honest, and then get out and have a little look because it's very hard to judge the rear distance on these cars and I'm a bit paranoid slash lacking talent, whatever you want to say. So, back onto my parking patch. I can see in my rear view the fire extinguisher is starting to come into place. There we go. I can use my side mirrors to make sure I'm equidistant between them. And I can see the black curb coming up. And I can decide that, okay, I want to be a little square on. My garden's a kind of a rhombus shape rather than square, so it's a bit hard to judge. That's interesting. That's very interesting. 
I've just realized that the image is not flipped left right it needs to be flipped left right because the blue fire extinguisher is the one I can see in my right hand door mirror mm. okay so let's see if we've got a way of setting that or should have but yeah that's thrown me real world stuff guys prompt uh, camera rear mirror image rear mirror image turn on rear mirror image turn off okay I think that's what I mean Not sure on my right and a red on my left it's a good job the different colors also I would have actually not tweaked that so back to home screen put the car into reverse and ah uh, that's better right now we can see the correct fire extinguishers on either side oh brilliant 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 um yeah and if i try and straighten it up think it's the right way this time um so i would judge but i'm as close as i dare and i'm hoping that that is about six to eight inches so anyone want to find out Could not be happier. So I would say that this has worked really well. <coughs> the mirror image was a bit of a shocker, really threw my mind for a moment. And now I'm going to be able to confidently reverse into small spaces. If anybody's interested in a similar or same setup as I've got, then I'll put a link to the bracket that I made for the dashboard in the description below the video. Also got links to the Carpu Ride head unit, which is W903, and the reversing camera. That's all below. Or check out my Amazon store, Amazon forward slash shop forward slash to the garage. Cool, cool. I'm going to put the car back in the garage. If you just go to Amazon forward slash shop forward slash to the garage, and I'll put that link in the description below so that it's, you can just click on it. It takes you to a to the garage area of Amazon that is categorized into hand tools, power tools, gadgets and gizmos, things specifically the XK8, etc. that I've bought from Amazon over the years so that you can follow the same links and have a look, see how much those cost at the moment. Nice little feature. Thank you, Amazon. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.